My name is Gary Neely, and welcome to my shop in the world of the Ringmaster. What we're going to do today is to do a project start to finish. What we want to be able to do is to show you each and every step of the way how you can produce the project that we're featuring today. And if you'll, you'll kind of watch and we'll kind of show you a little bit of the, some of the real fine details that we do, which will make a difference between a so-so project and a, a nice finished project. Uh, we want the product to look good uh, when, we're, when we're done. So consequently, over the number of years that I've been using the Ringmaster, I've picked up a few things. I'll try to explain them to you as I, as I go along, but just looking over my shoulder, we hope will be of some benefit to you and some help in being able to produce a product of your own. Now, so, now some of you may know my shop is located in southwestern Missouri. It is summer down here, and it has a tendency to get a little bit warm. We normally try to shut the air conditioning off while we're shooting videos, but sometimes that's just not possible, and this is one of those days. So once in a while you may have a little background noise, and please forgive me, but we're trying to stay a little comfortable down here. One of the things we want to do today is we want to make up some picture frames. Uh, as, as you know, round picture frames are relatively short supply out on the open market. Those that you do find tend to be somewhat expensive. And so what we're going to do is show you how I make picture frames so that we can actually make a round picture frame. In this particular case, I've, I glued up some, some walnut. And what I'll be doing here is I've, this one I've cut into somewhat of an octagonal shape, although not a true octagonal uh, in relationship to having all the sides equal. They're, they're well balanced. And what we want to be able to do is turn this into a picture frame. So I've glued up my pieces and I've, I've milled my material down to three quarter inch thickness and got it cut and drilled and we're pretty well ready to go. So the first thing of course we're going to do is we, we want to mount this onto the, onto the Ringmaster itself. Now one of the differences is on this, this particular type of an application is that your cuts are going to be straight. There's, there's no angle cuts involved here. Uh, because all we want to do is make it either perfectly round on, on the inside or on the outside so that the cutter head will actually now be, have to be adjusted to zero degrees. And I'll set that up. And then we'll move in a little closer so you can see some of the details of what we're actually doing here. Now when you're working with a octagonal shape or any other type of shape other than straight round, it's a little more difficult that the hole must be absolutely centered or it has to be so that it's, it's going to be attractive in any way, any way you cut it. Now we can do one of two things on this. We can actually cut all the way through and separate this outer ring and then take that to a router table and cut a rabbit in the back and round over our edges or whatever other type of treatment we want or the machine itself can be used to nibble away the recess on the inside. And that would be done simply by going in and once you've established where your cut is going to be, uh, going in with the, with the, from just a one side and taking this blade in in order to cut it back so that we would actually have the recess in order to hold the glass, the photo, the mat, whatever we're going to put into that. Uh, in this particular case, what I normally do, because I have a router table set up, I find it much simpler to cut that, actually cut that on a, uh, uh, on the router. And it just seems to go a little bit faster. But it's very simply a case of getting in there and nibbling away. As an example, what we'll do here now is we'll just turn the machine on, and then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to establish where the line is going to cut. Now we can stop the machine and we can examine it and see how much space we have. In this case, we're a little shy. We're not quite totally centered, although that'll still make an attractive frame. We actually want to see if we can get that in just a little bit further. So I'll make that adjustment now. And since this is going to be the back of the, the frame that we're working on right now, we'll just move it in. I'll get this set up and we'll make the change and move our index pin so that we have some way of being able to control this. Okay, we're into position. We'll loosen the index pin. Still have the dropsies here. 
and get it so that it fits down into the index pin. Then I'll tighten this back up. And now we have a steady reference. And we know that this is as far in now as we can go without hitting these edges. So let's go ahead and we'll make that other cut in there. Now if you're going to cut the rebate with this machine, you have to be very careful of your depth. And so therefore, you, you've got to set it up so that you can see in there what you're doing, make a couple of cuts so that you can actually see the bottom, and then go in and do it from there. What I, I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to literally separate this ring. Then we're going to go to the router table, and I'll, I'll cut it, I'll cut the rebate for the photo and for the glass, and I'll do that using a router bit. Now, as you can see, when you're cutting like that, I cut through first from one side and got a partial cut. Because there's no angle, it doesn't have to go in quite as far, and that will actually separate right off of there. So it, it actually will give you exactly what you want. We'll loosen everything up here, move this back, and here now is then the basic picture frame. This centerpiece in here is still a valuable piece of wood. Obviously, we can make a small... Uh, walnut bowl out of this, so we definitely want to hang on to this piece right here. So we'll get this set up. Let me get situated over at the router table and I'll show you how I cut the rebate on the back of it. Okay, we're at the router table now and I've set a rabbiting bit up in here. The bearing, of course, is what will run on the inside surface of our cut and give us the controlled depth that we want for our rebate in there. Uh, and, and because I get a lot of questions, and I, I, I might as well go ahead and answer them, basically what I'm using here is a, is a Viper router bit. It really doesn't make a lot of difference. A lot of very good router bits out there. It just happens to be the particular one that I, I like. The thing I want to do here now is to be able to set the depth of my router so that I'm going to cut approximately halfway through this piece of wood. And I can do that simply by just as long as this router's out here, it's very easy to do it bring the cutter up until I've got the approximate depth that I want, lock it into place, and we're now ready to put the router into the table, and we're ready to go. All right, now, as you make your first cut, what's going to have to happen is we now have to make a plunge cut into the piece in order to get the cutting done back so we can get back to the bearing. Again, very, very good control of this. Get it down on a good flat surface where you can control it, and you can work it back into that position to get to the bearing. Once you get there, then it becomes a lot easier because that bearing surface gives you something to press against and give your, your piece a little bit of support. But uh, without that, you want to make sure you've got good control of your material. So let's give it a go. Here, go. Okay, you can see what we've done here is we've actually worked that back in and started to cut our rebate back in here. And this now gives me a point where I have a lot more control because now when I go to start to do it, I'll be able to actually bring it in and start and go in the proper direction. Now I'm going to cut this in, in multiple sections and you'll notice me always watching where my hands are, always making sure that my hands are away from the router, but let's give it a go. Now another thing about this type of cut is you can see you can actually push the wood away from the router bit. Uh, then when you come back in you always want to go back in and start where the router bit is already cut so that you're not going to get it where it's going to grab the wood. So here we go, we've repositioned our hands, we'll go to another, another portion of the cut.
Now with the walnut, of course, it's kind of a dirty project because what's happening here is all of this dark sawdust is piling up here and you can see this. Normally I would run my vacuum, it just gives me too much back, uh, background noise. Uh, I simply operate that off of a simple uh, remote switch so I can always turn it on. get rid of my sawdust so it's a it's a way of cleaning up and basically we're pretty well set we've now cut the rebate into this and the basic frame itself is now cut it's ready to take a piece of glass take the round picture uh, all we want to do now is to do the decorative cuts on the ends